one of the things is delighting in the Lord. The word delight is an interesting word. It means where your affections are. So the question about delight starts where, if I ask you, where is your affections? Or in other words, bring it down to simple, easy understanding. If we draw a pie chart in given 24 hours time, where do you spend your time if you can put it in a pie chart? Sleeping, seven hours example. What do you do with your rest of your time? That will simply show up delight. Very easy. What do I do? With the time I have at my hand. That shows us where we will put our heart into. And that shows the delight factor. And the next thing the Bible tells us is. In his law he meditates day and night. Now I mentioned to you the law is not referring generally to the first five books of the, New Test of the Old Testament. Which is called the Torah. But though the, the reference here is Torah. The Strong's will tell me it simply means direction. It simply means instruction. It means body of prophetic teaching. It talks about instruction in the Messianic age. It's a body of priestly direction or instruction. So whenever you see the word law, please don't get confused and limit it to just the five books of the Bible. For I realize it is much more than that. It's an instruction to the body of Christ. So whenever we say the law, it talks about the instruction to the body of Christ. Every substance on planet earth comes with an instruction manual. I have an iPad. It comes with an instruction manual. The manufacturer will tell you this is the way you must use this machine. And he doesn't want, he, he just doesn't go into explaining every detail, but he just, just to tell you, that this is the way you must use it. And if you want to defy the instruction and do whatever you shouldn't be doing with this iPad, this iPad, the warranty becomes null and void. Will you say amen? So also with your life and mine. If we decide to do what we want to do with our lives and say, you know what, I don't think it's instruction manual or the instructions as the Bible talks to me about. If you say, I'm going to take care of it myself, I do not need this instruction manual Remember, your warranty is not covered. To be under warranty, to be under guarantee, we must simply follow the instructions which are prescribed in this book. Now, you may even see this book as a book of instructions or an operating manual for life to carry on well. For example, the Bible makes an instruction. It simply says, you shall not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. It's an instruction based on the word of God. And if you may decide to say, okay, fine, I think I will do what I want with my life. It's my life anyways. And then you get married to somebody who's not a believer. For those who have, and it's another story, but I'm talking to the ones who think you should be doing this and still survive. I'm here to tell you, you're going against the instruction manual. <laughs> it's become a very quiet church here. My point is, don't go against the instruction manual. So in this word this evening, our ultimate aim is to prosper in every single thing we do. Will you say amen? That's our heart. And so the Bible says, the Bible is a book which talks about pictures. It talks in pictures. And so the Bible says in verse number three, he shall be like. Will somebody say like? The word like simply means I'm trying to draw you two parallels and I'm going to extract the truth from one particular portion and then compare it with the other. And by comparing both, you get the truth. That's what the word like means. It means I'm going to draw for you a picture. And when you get to see this picture, this is going to have the instructions. This is going to have the DNA as how to live the life when it comes to the first instruction. Because the first instruction is compared with this one. The picture that we see. And what is the picture? It says, he shall be like. A tree planted. Can you say planted? Now I want you to understand this. Planting a tree is done by God. Keep your finger there. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. And I want to read for you verse number three. We are coming back, so keep your finger there. The book of Ephesians, please. Chapter number one. I want to read verse number three. I like this. 
Because in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesian church and says something like this in verse number 3. Are you there? Are you there? All right. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Can you say blessed us? Now, the Bible tells me that I'm already blessed. Will you say amen? The word blessed is simply, I know English speaking people, uh, is blessed us past tense, present tense or future tense. Okay, for those of you not very sure, let me tell you it's past tense, okay? Uh, so, the word blessed simply means it's, the, it's a done deal. It's over. It's completed. So, the Bible says in the New Covenant, the Apostle Paul gives God praise and he says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Can you say blessed us? That means it's a done deal. And he says with every, can you say every? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Will somebody say praise the Lord? Now, when I see the word planted, I'm, I'm, I'm forced to talk about this because the word planted means the word blessed. He has put us in a place of blessing. Now, now I need to do this. I need to do this. I'll do this now very quickly. I need to do this. Now, remember this. God has already blessed us in Christ Jesus. Will you say amen? That means if you come to Christ, you have all blessings. Will somebody say praise the Lord? That's the Bible says he has blessed us in Christ. So unless we are in Christ, can we partake of things which belong to Christ? That's why it is an important thing that you be a believer. Because unless you are a believer, you cannot inherit those things which belong to you unless you are in Christ. Will somebody say in Christ? That means if I and Christ become one, if I have given my life to Jesus Christ, if he's the Lord and master over my life, if I've changed my mind and said no to the devil's ways, I want to say yes to God. The Bible says we are born again. Romans chapter 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And when you are saved, you become a co-heir with Christ. In other words, it's like a checkbook. And you have two signatories. Jesus Christ signs on one side and I sign on the other. I expect an amen for that. Because I'm telling you, God and I, we are co-heirs. Now the reason I brought that up is for you to let you know that just as we are blessed in Christ, the word planted refers to the same thing. Go back to the book of Psalm chapter 1. I will tell you the connection there. We are blessed. Somebody say we are blessed. We are blessed in Christ Jesus. We are blessed in every spiritual way. We are blessed in the name of the Lord. The Bible says we are not trying to get blessed. We are blessed. Now the problem is this. If you and I try our attempts to get blessed, what can we do because we are already blessed? Just imagine this. You and I are already in the camp. Now if I were to tell you, please, you're welcome to the camp, you will tell me, I'm so sorry, I'm already in the camp. You understand that? Now, there's no point asking God, God bless me and bless me and bless me, when you're already blessed in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are blessed already. Will somebody say praise the Lord? Now, this changed my prayer. Now, when I know the Bible says Ephesians 1.3, I am blessed in, with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I stopped asking God to bless me. Why? I am blessed. You understand that? I'm, so, the reason why we need, how we need to pray now is again, I'm not going there, but I'm just telling you what Paul prayed. He prayed this prayer. In the book of Ephesians, again, we're not getting there. He said, oh Lord, open my eyes of understanding to see the blessings which are in store for me. Will somebody say, praise the Lord? That's the prayer. He didn't say, God, bless me, bless me, bless me. No, he said, I am blessed. But he only said, God, open my spiritual eyes to see the extent of the blessing which is in store for me in Christ Jesus. And every time we preach the word of God, the revelation dawns upon us that we are blessed 
immensely. We are blessed in every spiritual blessing in the, in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. Will you say amen? Now note this. The Bible says we are blessed in such a way that if you go back to the book of beginnings, which is the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis there are truths which are so wonderful because that's the book of beginnings. We must go there for in it contains this truth that we are blessed. I'll explain that to you. Go to the book of Genesis, please, if you will. Chapter 2 and verse number 9. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 9. I'm going to prove to you that we are blessed. From the book of Genesis, chapter number 2 and verse number 9. Are you there? All right. And out of the ground, the Lord made every green, every tree grow, that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Watch this. We are talking about and he shall be like a tree. So if you go back to the book of beginnings, the Lord says, the Lord planted trees for men. And the Bible says out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There were two trees apart from the trees which God created. One is called the tree of life. The other one was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verse number 10. And the river, watch this, watch this. Now one river went out to Eden to water the garden. Now give me your attention please. What is it? Psalm chapter 1 and verse 3 said, He should be like a tree planted by the what? Rivers of water that brings forth fruit, right? I mean, just imagine the picture. You and I are referred to as a tree now get the picture in your mind. Your brain begins to see a tree. Thankfully, we are in a place where we see very flourishing trees planted by the river when you came up this particular mountain. The, draw, the Lord is drawing the same picture here. You see this. The Lord says, of the, God brought forth trees from the garden and he sent forth a river which came into four tributaries to water the garden. And if the garden is watered, the tree begins to grow. Do you see the same picture there? The same picture is drawn in the book of Genesis. Listen to this very carefully. Verse number 10. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there it parted and it became four river heads. Somebody say four river heads. Now let me explain to you. The name of the first is Pishon. And it is the one which cursed the whole land of Israel. If you're making down notes, just make a note of this word. P-I-S-H-O-N. Pishon. Or Pishon. I am not a Hebrew student. So if I make a mistake, kindly excuse me. But I, I'm just reading it as it is. Write this word down. P-I-S-H-O-N. The first tributary, the first river is called Pishon. Verse number 12. Or let's read verse number 13. The name of the second river is Gihon, G-I-H-O-N. That's the name of the second river. Verse number 14. The name of the third river is Hidekel, H-I-D-D-E-K-E-L. And the fourth one, you find it in the same chapter, the same verse, is called Euphrates. Euphrates. Now, why did I ask you to make a mention of these four names? It is very interesting. Remember, the Bible says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Going back to the book of Genesis, you see the same picture of a tree or a garden being flourished by rivers, actually four river heads of water. Let's see what it means. I did just an interesting study on the words, the meanings of each word. Write this down, please, if you will. The word Pishon, P-I-S-H-O-N, it means increase. It means increase increase that's the name of the first river the second river is Gihon it simply means bursting forth it means bursting forth the next river which is called Hidikel it's it means rapid r-a-p-i-d or fast rapid and the word Euphrates, it means fruitfulness. It means fruitfulness. So, Pishon is increased. Gihon is bursting forth. 
Hidekel is rapid, and Euphrates is fruitfulness. Now, if you were to read it together, you get something like this. It says, increase, which is bursting forth rapidly towards fruitfulness. That's what it means. Four rivers, names put together, it means increase, bursting forth rapidly towards fruitfulness. Will somebody say, praise the Lord? Everything's got a meaning in the Bible. There's nothing insignificant in the Bible. So it means in the very book of beginnings, when God created the, the, the trees, he said, I'm going to water this tree with just one river and it's going to distribute itself into four tributaries. And the very names indicate to us there's going to be an increase bursting forth rapidly towards fruitfulness. That's the problem with God. He's a lavish God. He's an extravagant God. Will somebody say amen? That's why Psalm 1-3 says, whatever you do shall prosper. He's planted you in a particular place. He's watered you good enough. He says the very names of these rivers is to increase you, is to prosper you, is to bless you, is to give you all that you need. Will somebody say amen? If you're looking for healing, he's going to be our healer tonight. If you're looking for fruitfulness, he's going to increase that fruit into your life. If you're talking about being, oh, nobody loves me. He's going to be that friend in the time of trouble. He said, I will be whatever you want me to be as long as you're planted. Four rivers. Increase. Bursting forth rapidly towards fruitfulness. Will somebody say, praise the Lord. God's desire in the book of Genesis itself is to water us. Because we are compared to a tree that brings forth its fruit. We are compared to a tree that is bringing forth prosperity. We are compared to a tree that is flourishing. Go with me please to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter number 17 and verse number 8. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter number 17 and verse number 8. Jeremiah has seen the same picture. And he draws it so beautifully with a little bit more detail than this book of Psalm chapter 1. I also want to get there. Are you there in Jeremiah 17 and verse number 8? If you're there, will you say amen? amen. Oh, okay, let's do it together, right? Verse number three, 8, 1, 2, and 3. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its root by the river, and will not fear... When heat comes, but his leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Will you say praise the Lord? Oh, what a wonderful scripture. The Bible says it gives a little more meaning. He said he will spread out his roots by the river. Will you say roots? When a tree needs to stand firmly, it has to be planted very strongly by the roots. And the Lord says, you know what? If you just manage to abide inside of me, if you're just going to be inside me, if you can be a Talmud who will spend time in meditation and delight yourself in the things of the Lord, he said, it is my job to plant you by the rivers of water. You will bring forth fruit in your season. The Bible says that your roots will be so strong that the Bible says something beautiful. When heat comes... You will not fear. Will somebody say praise the Lord? When there is trouble, when there is heat, when the pressure is on you, the Bible says you will never be afraid. Will somebody say I will not be afraid? Because I'm planted by the rivers of water. And my roots are growing strong. Would you believe that? Do you believe that? If you believe that, say hallelujah. I believe that with all my heart. If all I have to do is what? Be planted. All I have to do is take care of myself. Be planted. Now the Bible says something more beautiful. He says, your leaf will be green. Will somebody say praise the Lord? That means you will flourish. When you see a tree which has got green leaves, it indicates that you will flourish and you will prosper. And I like the next thing. These are the attributes of somebody who's planted there. It says here, and you will not be anxious in the year of drought. <laughs> you will not be anxious 
in the year of drought. You know the story of Isaac in the Bible? The Lord said to Isaac, Isaac, stay in the land of Gerar. The Bible actually says there was a famine in the land. And there was a famine in the land and the Lord said to Isaac, Isaac, stay in the land. And the Bible says Isaac obeyed the voice of God and he stayed in the land. And that's, that's what it's all about. Imagine, he said, you will not be anxious in the year of drought. So what did Isaac do? In spite of his brain telling him that you will die if you live here because nothing grows here. It's a land of drought. The Bible tells me he obeyed the voice of God. And because he obeyed the voice of God, the Bible says when he sowed seed, it says in the same year, will somebody say praise the Lord for this? In the same year, he got a hundredfold increase. I expected a better amen from you guys. I said in the same year, a year of drought, he got a hundredfold increase. A hundredfold in the same year. The Bible says, you will not be anxious in the day of drought. Will somebody say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. <laughs> Next line. Nor will you cease from yielding fruit. I like that. The psalmist said, all that you do shall prosper. Jeremiah says, you shall not cease from yielding fruit. Praise God. Hallelujah. That means everything which needs to happen will happen at the right time. Will somebody say praise the Lord? Now all that you guys have to do is this. If you're waiting for a settlement, if you're waiting for marriage, if you're waiting for your future to be right, whatever the case may be, the Bible says if you are just like a tree planted by the rivers of water, the Bible simply says that you will have the right things coming to your way at the right time or the opportune time. Will somebody say praise the Lord? It will come just as it is. Why? Because you are delighting yourself in the law of the Lord. Because you are meditating in the word of God. There's no option. As I mentioned in the first day, you are destined to prosper. Oh, come on guys. I said you're destined to prosper. If you like it, say yes. If you don't want it, just say, okay, it's okay. You want it? You better say amen to that. Because unless you say amen, it doesn't belong to you. You understand what I'm saying? It, amen means, okay, man, I agree with you. I agree with the word of God. I'm with you on this thing. All right? So the Bible simply says, you will never cease from yielding fruit. Praise God. I want to yield fruit in my season. Things will happen at the right time. Are you believing God for something? For something to happen in your life? Are you? Anybody believing God for something? Anybody believing God for something? The rest of you are not believing God for anything. All right. I'll talk to the people who are lifting up their hands. <clears throat> you believe in God for something? Come on, lift, keep your hand lifted up. Say this and confess this after me. Let's go to the same chapter and say it after me. God will bring forth fruit in the right season. I will prosper. I will increase. I will flourish. I am like a tree. My roots are growing strong. My leaves are green. It will not wither. In the right time, things will happen. I will receive what I am destined to receive. Simply because... I am blessed in the name of the Lord. Somebody shout to God this evening. Say hallelujah. Because the Lord says we are blessed. You know, the, just watch this connection. The Lord says that you are blessed already, right? That means it's already done, correct? That means the buffet is on. You understand that? Everything has been done. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he cried out these words, Tetelestai, which means it is finished. Say it after me, please. It is, one more time, it is finished. That means the purpose for which he came was completed and he said it is finished. That's why we are already blessed. 
That's why we're already taken care of. That's why we are already healed. For the Bible says, it doesn't say we will be healed. The Bible says we are healed already. And by the stripes of Jesus, we were past tense healed. To, you know, 1 Peter 2.24. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? Listen, it's done. So what happens is for me to be partaking of those things which happened to me, I must be at the right place at the right time. And that's the key. We are not, I'm not asking God, bless me, bless me. Because the Bible tells me, I am blessed. No devil can take the blessing away from me because I am blessed. See, it's only when something has to be done that the devil can come and interfere with those things. But the Bible says, Ephesians 1, 3, I am blessed. So when I'm blessed, it's a completely, it's a done deal. But there's only one problem. I need to get to be in that place where I intersect with my timing. For the Bible says, for everything under the sun, there is a perfect timing. Our problem now is not, you know what, it's not that we're not blessed. The problem is the blessing is there and we are passing so close to a blessing. And then we think, oh God, we haven't been blessed. Let me declare to you even this evening, you are blessed by every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies, in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're there at the right place, you'll get your blessing. That's my heart. Hopefully you will not miss on the blessing which is just passing by. A songwriter wrote the song, Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Why not others thou art passing? Do not pass me by. I'm here to tell you, God does not pass you by, but you can pass by what God has in store for you by not being at the right place at the right time. Praise God. You are blessed. So now the Bible tells me, that when you and I are not in the right place, we seem as if we have lost the blessing. So the key is to be planted by that river. And when you draw from the river, what's the river? Okay, okay, let's, let's talk about this for a very quick minute. Now, if you're wondering what the water is, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and the verse number 26 says, it is by the washing of the water of the word. It's the word of God. Simple as that. I don't have no time to spend on that. Let me straight away give it to you. If the tree symbolizes a believer, if a tree symbolizes a Talmud, a disciple, what does the, the water refer to? The water refers to the word. And so if you are planted by the rivers of water, that means if I'm planting myself where there's the word, like this place, I'm here to tell you there are streams flowing in every direction over your life, even in this camp, in the north, in the south, in the east and in the west. Every preacher who has come here and preached to you, we have preached our heart out to you just to give you the word of God. We pray that you will be like a tree that will suck the nutrients from the word of God and you will grow and you'll bring forth fruit and your leaf will not wither all that you do shall prosper somebody say that's me oh hallelujah that's me that's the reason why it's what is happening here is significant thank god for the music thank god for everything else which you enjoyed thank god for the games we love it and we like it but there's nothing compared to what is happening right now the graciousness of the word of god the mantle of the holy ghost is falling in this place even as i'm preaching to you because it's the word that will undergo you it's the word which will keep set you free it's the word that will give you life John chapter 6 and verse 63, Jesus says, The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The words I'm speaking this evening, it's not mere English. It is English, I understand that. But it's spirit, it is life. It is energizing your inner man. Your inner man is getting excited because it's receiving the word of God. And you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water where you can suck from the word. Oh, hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 15. I'm not through Genesis. I like Genesis. I always go back to Genesis because it is the book of beginnings. And in the book of beginnings, there are truths which is always called the law of first mention. It means every time a truth is mentioned in the original text, that is in the book of Genesis, there's a thread running through the whole Bible with this being the main truth. 
So I'm just going back to Genesis because it establishes for me the main truth of what I'm trying to tell you in the book of Psalms. Go with me, please, if you will. The book of Genesis, the second chapter, reading from verse number 15. Are you there? All right. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Now watch this. When I say you are blessed, Genesis says yes to it. Rather, because Genesis talks about it, Psalms agrees with Genesis. Because Genesis is a book of beginnings. Let me explain to you what I'm trying to tell you. The Bible says, God blessed him. It means that God made the atmosphere. God made Eden conducive for man to live in. You understand that? He didn't put man first and then make the Garden of Eden. God made the Garden of Eden and then put man inside of it. That's very significant. That's very significant. Why? Because the Bible says, even before you were born in your mother's womb, I called you. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense to me now. Because now I understand, when God called me, he thought about me. When God called me out, he thought about me. He spoke to himself and said, let me create Sandeep in my own image and in my own likeness. And let me call him out at the right opportune time, at the right opportune moment, at this particular year, in this particular place, because I have an awesome plan for him. And when I draw him from there, put him in, in my mother's womb, in my mother's womb, and even when he comes out from there, when he grows at this age, I have a plan for him. When he becomes this, I have a plan for him. When I do this, I have a plan for him. At this age, I have a plan for him. I I have a ministry for him. I will travel nation. Oh, hallelujah. He's got a plan for you. That's why even before man was put on the scene, he made it conducive for Eden to, to be good for men. You understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense to you? I'm here to tell you, my friend, that God, even before you were born, has planned a plan for you. No, I'm not happy with your amen. Now, if you want to say amen, say it fully, others don't say it, all right? The reason I'm saying this is because I, I want you to get this. Don't you ever in your wildest dream, even in your wildest of wild dreams, think that you are an accident. Turn to somebody and say you're not an accident. The Lord makes a garden. Puts man inside that garden. Feeds that garden with rivers for tributaries. Says this is what it means. And makes the place so good. Because God had a plan and a purpose for this man called Adam. And then he puts him there. Do you understand that? What God has put you is in a good place. What God has, tell somebody, what God has put you, it's a good place. It's a good place. Listen to me. God does not make any mistakes. God is not making a timing error. God didn't get you in the wrong place at the wrong time. God got you at the right place. At the right time. He made all these things for you. He put the garden. He put the tributaries. He named the garden blessing. He named the garden increase. He named the river. I'm sorry. The river bursting forth. He named the river expanse. He named the river fruitfulness. Put you there. Ephesians 1.3 says. You are blessed. Even before you came. You are blessed. You understand what I'm saying. Even before you were born. The scripture holds good. You are blessed. So my job is this what it says in the book of Genesis. It says here, and then God, Lord God, put the man and put him in the garden of it to tend it and keep it. Can you tell your neighbor, tend it and keep it? Tend it and keep it. What does the Bible say? It says, yes, I've, God has put me in the right place. God has put me in the right time. God has given me all that I need. God has 
filled my life with good things. But there's something about tending and keeping the garden. Will you say amen? amen. God has given you everything you want. Put you in the right place. Blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. And then he says, I'm going to give you an instruction. Tend it. Keep it. You have your personal Eden. All of you, myself included, we have our personal Eden. Tend it, keep it. Tend it, keep it. Tend it, keep it. Unfortunately, for our first parents, they did not tend it and keep it, for they heard the voice of an intruder. They heard the voice of a talking serpent. And they had a choice to choose whether they would listen to the author of creation, the father of lights, the God of glory, the great I am, or to listen to a talking serpent. But unfortunately, for whatever it was worth it, they listened to a speaking serpent and whole of humanity fell to the ground. But I want to let you know, Praise God. God is above everything else. God was not caught by surprise when he found man fail him. He was not sitting up there in the boardroom of heaven with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They did not have a panic attack and said, Oh, what do we do? The man that we created has just betrayed us. It did not happen. For the Bible says, even before the foundations of the world, Jesus died for me. Even before, that means, even before Adam could do the treason, the Bible tells me in the spiritual realm, Jesus already died for me. That means, even before God created Adam and Eve, in the spiritual realm, it had already happened. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ had already occurred in the spiritual realm. And therefore when Adam sinned, the price of that sin was already made. The sacrifice was prepared even before sin can exist. I, I don't think you got it. I don't think you got it. <laughs> Jesus died for us how many years ago? 2,000 years ago. In the natural, right? But the Bible tells me, <clears throat> the book of Revelation, that Jesus Christ died before for me even before the foundations of the earth. All right? So when Jesus Christ died for me, spiritually speaking, even before the foundations of the earth, that means Adam was created after the creation of the earth. And when Jesus died before the foundation of the earth, he had died in the spiritual realm even before Adam committed treason. So all I'm trying to tell you this evening is, even before your trouble has come, God has made a way of escape for you. Mm. He's not surprised by the trouble you are going through. He's not taken aback by the things which has befallen you. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, there's a phrase which goes something like this. This phrase says, and it came to pass. That means if tragedy came in your life, it came to pass. If you have a sickness issue in your life, it just says, and it came to pass. Why did it come? To pass. Not to stay. It came to pass. Why? Because God has got blessings unaccountable for me. I, I dare to park in the place where I shouldn't be parking. It's my stupidity. My destination is prosperity. The Bible says all that I do shall prosper. And so if you hit the road bump, don't park there. Keep going on. Just keep going on. Things will be fine with you. Let me just run very quickly. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it 
and keep it. And the next verse says, and the Lord commanded the man saying, I'm going to stop right there and go to another scripture. But listen to what I have to say. The Bible says, and the Lord commanded man. The greatest, the only one thing the Lord said, the only one thing the Lord said is not to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the only thing he said. That's the only commandment. Tonight, the Lord is saying only one thing. If you are planted inside of me, you understand that? In Christ, he says that no demon, no devil can come and mess with you. Nobody can come and mess with you because you'll be like a tree which is green on the outside. Your roots are strong. Will somebody say amen? I'm going to give you quickly, as far as fast as I can, three examples in the Bible which refers to this tree and the, how this tree flourishes. For you must understand that every time the Bible speaks about a tree, we do have a message behind that. First one, the book of Mark chapter number 11. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter number 11. The first one we just saw is the fact that God took the man and put him in Eden to tend it and to keep it. So talking about our responsibility. Go to the book of Mark chapter number 11. If you're there, will you say amen? The Bible tells me, let's read from this verse. I'm just going to go here because of lack of time. Verse number 12. Now, the next day, when they had come out of Bethany, he was hungry. Can somebody say hungry? Jesus was hungry. And the Bible says, and seeing a far a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, the Bible says he found nothing, just leaves. For it was not the season for figs. Please give me your attention. Jesus being a man, he was hungry. And the Bible tells me he saw a fig tree afar off. And I looked up an encyclopedia. It said to me that every time you see a fig tree with green leaves, it's an indication that it has fruit. All right? So that's what it said. So to me, when Jesus saw a tree far off, a fig tree, he was hungry. He said, okay, let me go take off this tree and eat of this fruit and satisfy my hunger. Now, the Bible says, when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season of figs. It simply means it should have brought forth figs, green leaves. It didn't have figs. Verse number 14. Yeah, I like this. It says in verse number 14, in response, Jesus said to it. I don't know what your Bible says. Some of your Bibles say he responded. Some will say he said to it. Whatever the case may be. Listen to me very carefully. The Bible uses the word responded. What does your Bible say? He said to it, said to it. Now, listen to me. Now, we're talking about a tree. You understand that? Now, when you have to respond to something, obviously, before your response, there must be a question for us to respond to anything else. You understand that? And the Bible says, Jesus said to it. It means that asked Jesus a question. You know what question it asked Jesus? It said to Jesus, you know what? You've come to me. But I fooled you. I got nothing to give you. I got nothing to give you. Now the Bible, the very interesting thing is this. And in response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Now, the interesting part is this. Life brings to us questions. When you live life, life poses questions to you. I can prove it to you that things talk to us. Can I prove it to you? When we look at the traffic signal and the thing stays red, we have spoken to it and said, come on, turn green.
when we see our past book our bank balances we say come on man why is it so bad you've spoken to your computer screen you understand that when you're upset with something you've thrown something on the floor you know you don't understand life is posing questions now the teaching of this is so important because now jesus has taught us how to respond back to life this is an interesting story about this fig tree because the lord says you shall not eat fruit let no one eat fruit from you ever again and the bible says and the disciples heard it now it was not something mumbling the lord spoke to the tree he said nobody will eat of you again now my question to you is this when we go through life's challenges when life poses questions to you when life can ask you you think you're going to make it <laughs> the life asks you a question do you know you're from just a simple family you think you're going to make it in life you're seated here you think you're going to become a world changer life says to you you know you're from such a simple background you think you're going to get married right or for that matter you're going to get married at all when you're going through financial crunch life poses questions you think you'll be able to pay your children's fees will you be able to have that education life poses questions a normal man who's not planted by the rivers of water will shut down and he will whimper he will cry he will curse the day he was born he will curse the god in heaven he will say my life is good for nothing he will say god take away my life he say god i'm going to kill myself nobody loves me that should not come from a talmud because a talmud is planted by the rivers of water he is going to look at the circumstance he is going to look at that situation he is going to look it straight in the eye and he will tell him in the name of jesus christ i will not die i will live and declare the glory of the lord oh my goodness me i'm excited because when life begins to pose challenges against me a talmud is a one who will speak to that circumstance what did jesus do he didn't say oh my god let me find the next tree turn with me please verse number 20 of the same chapter oh praise god hallelujah i am excited to speak this word it's it's an exciting word praise god verse number 20 now in the morning after finishing off a little bit of work jesus came back now in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from where one more time dried up from where <clears throat> okay it dried up from where the root level is the seen or the unseen realm you can't see the roots right <laughs> imagine the tree when jesus said to it you nobody shall eat of you again instantly it died <laughs> instantly it died but the tree on the outside was still green because it takes a little while for the deadness to manifest on the outside you understand that it takes a little while what does it mean it means when you begin to speak to situations when you begin to speak to circumstances when the doctor has given you a report and the doctor's report says you will live for only 6 months you begin to start speaking the word of god you tell yourself i'm not going to die but i'm going to live and declare the glory of the lord you're going to score psalms 50 isaiah chapter 53 you will begin to say by the stripes of jesus i am healed you're going to quote exodus 15:26 oh jehovah rapha healing god you're going to quote 1 peter chapter 2 and verse number 24 by the stripes of Jesus I was healed somebody say amen if you begin to see these verses and quote these verses and then you thought oh my god because I've quoted these verses things are going to be very well next day morning you go to the doctor and the doctor says your problem is not subsided as a matter of fact it's increased remember this it is died at the root level it will take some time to manifest 
Keep speaking the word. Keep declaring the word. Speak the word. It doesn't matter what you feel. Keep speaking that word. Hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful thing that is. It encourages me. If I'm going through troubled waters, it doesn't matter. I keep speaking the word. I don't see no change, but it doesn't matter because a believer is not a believer because he sees. A believer is a believer because he does not see. Because it happens in the realm of the unseen. The Bible says that it started dying at the roots. You couldn't see the roots. Just give it 24 hours. In this case, it was 24 hours. The Bible said, as they passed by, the next day, they saw the fig tree dry up from the roots. I love that. Where did it dry up from? Not from the shoot, but from the root. Hallelujah. From the bottom, it started drying up. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look. Now, Jesus need not look. You understand that? Your Talmud does not look. He has spoken it. He believes it. It will happen. He does not have to look. He believes in his heart. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I don't have to see to believe because I spoke it. Because I decreed it. Because I declared it. It must happen. The Bible says, you shall declare a thing and it shall be established for you Jesus said to them have faith in God and he said to them in verse 23 whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea does not doubt in his heart but believe watch this and believes that those things he says will be done so again what is the message here the message is what do I say in front of contrary circumstances. What am I speaking? A Talmud speaks the word. He does not speak the things which he sees with his natural eyes. For the Bible tells me a person who sees with his natural eyes in the book of Romans the 8th chapter is a carnal Christian. He has to see to believe. But a Talmud, he believes, he sees. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you for that one. Amen, brother. God bless you. Verse 24. Therefore, the Lord said, this is the message now. This is the message. This is the message of the whole thing. Therefore, I say to you, says the Jesus, whatever things, somebody say whatever, you ask when you pray, <laughs> believe that you receive them and then you will have them. Now, it's not saying... You believe you receive that. That means you, you settle in your mind, this is what it is. And then you will have them. You understand that? Read the last line. Believe that you, come on, all of us together. Believe that you receive them and you will. So this changed my prayer. I don't say, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. You understand that? I believe I've received so when you believe you receive, how will your prayer be? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you understand that, right? So the Bible says, believe that you receive them. So if I've got something, how will my prayer be? My prayer be will not say, oh God, do something. I'm just a poor wayfarer. I'm just by the grace of God, managing to reach the portals of heaven. By the skin of my teeth, I wish I make it to heaven. And God, please, I'm a beggar. I'm a worm. I'm... Stop that prayer. Talk like a son. And say, God, I'm your child. I decree, I receive. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Change your prayer. My whole prayer life went for a toss. Because my prayer was asking God, please give me, give me, give me more. But when I realized that I have to, I've already received it because I have prayed about it. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. My prayer changes into thankfulness and adoration. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord which makes heaven and earth. Oh, wonderful. Next one. With this we're going to be closing soon. Go to the book of Galatians chapter number 3. Let's get the next message from a tree in the Bible. The book of Galatians, the third chapter.
Are you there? All right. Jesus Christ became a man. Listen to me very carefully. I've not given you the verse, so you can just hang in there, okay? Jesus Christ became a man that we can become the sons of God. Jesus Christ, okay, now I'm going to expect an amen from you. I don't know whether I'm expecting too much, but let me see, okay? Now, I said Jesus Christ became a man so that we can have the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. All right, okay. Jesus Christ became sin that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All right. I'm, I hope I'm, I'm happy with that. All right. But the Bible says Jesus Christ became a curse so that I can be blessed. Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 13. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 13. If you're there, will you say amen? Okay. Christ has redeemed us. Past tense, present tense, or future tense. Talk to me. Past tense. All right. Very simple. Has redeemed me is past tense. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs. The second message of the tree is the tree on which Jesus died. It was two pieces of crude timber nailed together which formed a cross on which the king of glory was nailed. I want to submit to you, just imagine this. The Bible tells me that the creation crucified the creator. The crucified was the creator of the universe. This morning when we did our Bible study, we came to a verse in the book of John, the 15th chapter. It said something like this, without me, you can do nothing. You can't breathe. You can't look. You can't take a step forward. You cannot eat. You cannot hear. You will just disintegrate. As a matter of fact, let me go to the extent of telling you, the very atoms in your body and mind are held by the word of God. The planets do their thing simply because he has spoken it. Imagine the speed of light. What's the speed of light? 176,000 miles or something like that per second. All right, whatever the case may be. That is the speed of the creation. Light. Imagine the speed of the word. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you will get it later. If light can travel at that speed, imagine the word which created that light. It's got the power to rearrange protons, electrons and neutrons, the atoms in your body. It can rearrange sickness and disease. It can align malfunction. It can go into your body and change the DNA. It can change the face of the earth. It can change your destiny. It can change my destiny. Somebody give God a price. The word of God is powerful the word of god is strong the bible tells me thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path christ the one who spoke that light into existence he humbles himself even to the death on the cross and may I talk to you about the opportune time. When Jesus was crucified, just prior to that, there was no such thing as a cross. He was, had to die on two crude pieces of timber put together called the cross. And the king of glory, can you imagine this? This blows my mind. And if I drop here crying, excuse me, because I just cannot understand how much he loves me. That is willing to become man, to take on your sin and my sin. And he had, the Bible tells me he became a curse for me. 
And if you are having a panic attack that your friend does not love me, you must be sadly mistaken. You do not understand the length, the breadth, the height and the dimensions of the love of the Father for you. For the Apostle Paul says, I cannot describe the love of God. Neither English is good enough. Hebrew is faintly even close. But I cannot explain to you the grandeur and the greatness of this love. How can I say it? Height, depth, principality, power, ruler, nothing can separate me. It's love of Christ. Mm. And then after all this that we have said, if we don't submit to this love and say, I love you, I don't read to prove that I'm right because I am blessed. I don't prove to pray because I'm blessed. I'm not doing something here just to get your attention. Lord, because you love me, I pray. Because you love me, I read my Bible. Because you love me. It's not to get his attention. Some of us do our Bible reading. Oh, let me please the Lord. Listen to me. The Bible says he became a curse for you. Even you existed. Even before you were known with a name, he, he loved you. Even before you were born, he died for you. And now my only response back to him is this. When I see this verse, I tell myself, God, the only response I have to give you is to give you myself. What better can I give to the Lord who has given me his life? Can I just read three chapters and say, God, I've done my duty? Oh, pathetic. Can I just read... Pray for half an hour and say, oh Lord, I finished my duty. I'll see you next Sunday. What will be the apt response to a God who became man? He became sin. He became a curse for you and for me. He died on the tree for the Bible says, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He hung on the tree for you and for me. What would your response be? Would it just be a few chapters in the Bible? Would it just be attending a power camp and going back and living the way you're living? Will it just be continuing life the way you have continued with life? Just giving a God a little wee time before you, your, your eyes close and your head hits the pillow? Will it just be something so small to say, God, thank you, uh, you've been good. Uh, a prayer before your meal. I mean, is this what God is wanting when he has become a curse for you? Doesn't he expect something more? When you feel this, you're going to stand up and say, God, not just my money, not just my time. You're going to say, God, me. Me. I'm going to give you me. If you can do something with me, you take me. When I came to the Lord many years ago, I was in my drunkenness and my drugs and my alcohol and my rubbish. And I had this question. I said, God, I understand this. If I were a big singer, you would really use me, I know. If I were to speak in public the way I could somebody else speak, if I could do a little bit of that, I would really appreciate that you can take me. But I said, God, I have nothing to give you. I've got my brokenness. I have my drugs and my alcohol. I've got my bad memories. Nothing is working for me. Oh God, I do not know whether you will really want me. Today I stand in front of you to tell you Jesus Christ is Lord. His power is able to change. His power is able to restore. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. If you dare to give your life to him, he will change it. He will break it. He will multiply it. He will distribute it and make you a blessing to nations. Somebody clap for Jesus. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written. Somebody say it is written. Because it is written, it came to pass. Hallelujah. Because it is written, it came to pass. Because he, your name is written, it will come to pass. Because it is written that you are blessed, you will be blessed. Because it is written that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed, we will be healed. Because it is written, you shall have long life and flourish. It Because it is written, you will live with long life and flourish if you dare to say amen. 
Because it is written. Everything depends. It is written. When the devil tried to whip Jesus on a mountain, Jesus turned to him and never said, you know who you're talking to? I'm the son of God. He never said that. Rather, he says, it is written. My question to you, as I ask myself, as I stand here, is do we have the stuff inside to even quote and say, it is written? Do we know it is written? Unless we know it is written, can we say it is written? If the word is not inside you, it will not come out of you. The danger of this generation is that we want miracles without the miracle worker. We want the word to proceed forth without the word being inside of us. But that's why the Bible says he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in a season. That means I need to do something, plant myself, get the word inside my spirit man. Will somebody say amen? Word gets inside you, word comes out of you. When the pressure comes and squeezes you, out of you comes the word. Oh, hallelujah. Verse number 14, and I'm beginning to close. Verse number 14. It says, the reason Jesus became a curse. Oh, hallelujah. Verse number 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Why did he become a curse? That the blessing of Abraham may flow upon you. What's the blessing of Abraham? In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. I'll make you a father to the nations. Lord looked at an insignificant man at the backside of a desert and said to him, I'm going to make your name great. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, it's a good thing to be with the Lord. It's a good thing. He will make your name great. For all of us who are trying to get ourselves name great, stick with him. He has promised in the scriptures that the blessing of Abraham may come upon me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want the blessing of Abraham. He says, you are with me, my brother. He says, in blessing, I will bless thee. That means you're going to be a blessing to yourself. And wherever you go, you will be a blessing. When people ask you to come to the house, please come home. Just come. I just want you to be here. Why? You're a blessing. Hey, come to my place. Visit me. Why? All you do is just come. You are, you are a blessing. Oh, hallelujah. What a thing to do. Why? Because of Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'm going to ask you to stand if you will, if you don't mind. As you're standing, turn with me to the book of Psalm, chapter number 52, and verse number 8. As you're standing, please turn with me to the book of Psalm, the 52nd chapter and verse number 8. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you there? Hmm. It says something like this. Can we all read this? At the count of three. Psalm 52, verse 8. I want you to lift a free hand, okay? If you're holding the Bible on left, keep your right hand free and lift it up. Confess this after me. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of the Lord. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever. Because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name, for it is good. The Bible says, keep your hands down. The Bible says, I am like a green olive tree. See the picture of a green olive tree blossoming. Where are you planted? In the house of the Lord. You know what the house of the Lord is? It means what God has called you to do, 
in the ministry. Whatever God has called you to do, let me let you know that every single person in the sound of my voice is called for a ministry or the other. The ministry is not just for people who are front full-time ministers. It's for you. There's the Bible says you need to go to the world and preach that gospel. You got a ministry. Ask God to help you. Close your eyes. Let's pray. The next few minutes are vitally important. Because after, ev after I've done my preaching and after I have done everything I should be doing, if left like this, it means I have not completed my job. A rightful response is required of you. When a message like this has come forth, there has to be a response. Either to say, yes, I'm going to plant myself. Thank you for the three descriptions of these trees which has taught me something. The first tree taught me that I should tend it and keep it. Though I've been planted in the house of the Lord, though I've been planted in the garden of Eden, though the rivers are flourishing me, yet I must tend my life, keep my life. Let not the evil one speak into it. I'm going to stay clear from the evil, evil one's tricks. I'm going to stay in the world. I'm going to stay in the Father's house. I'm not going to leave the Father's house, though the world on the outside looks tempting. The second message is another tree. Oh, this is another beautiful tree. We talk about a tree which has told us to speak to circumstances. I don't know what you are facing this evening, my friend, but I feel in my spirit that you must do a little bit of challenging to the problem you're facing. The reason why we're not out of our problem is because we have spoken about the problem. We prayed about the problem, but the Lord says, speak to the problem. Last three talks about Jesus, the King of glory. He died on the cross. Gave up his life for you and for me. To just to let you know that he loves you. And the message behind this crude pieces of timber put together we call the cross. is nothing but a message of salvation. The message which says, you know what? In spite of you failing me, Adam, he says, I'm going to give you a new niece, lease of life. I'm going to die instead. The greatest love story ever. The fourth one we confessed is that we will be like a green olive tree. I want you to open up your mouth. It needs a response from you. It's up to you. I have preached enough. I've said enough. The Holy Ghost has sp spoken to you. Now, if you want a breakthrough, if you say, God, I need something happening out of this day. These trees I've spoken to you signifies the situations we are going through. Some of us, we need to speak to our issues and our concerns. Just like Jesus did, you need to open your mouth and address that problem. We've been talking to the problem too long. Some of us have been talking to the God about our problem. We've said, God, look at my mountain. God says, I've given you the power over scorpions and over the snakes and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You open your mouth and speak to your mountain. God, do something. God says, you have the power to do everything. Now, can we do that right now? Come on. I want you to begin to open up your mouth. I'm not going to coax you to open your mouth. It's your life. It's your life. You open it up. You better speak to it right now. Whatever the issues may be. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Speak it. Speak to the problem. Open your mouth. Whatever the concern may be. Whatever, I'm telling you, whatever it may be. Tonight, tonight. Tonight is your deliverance. Tonight. Tonight. You can write this date down. Tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Speak to the problem. I still don't hear you. It's up to you. I'm going to open up my mouth and I'm going to speak to my issues. All right. If it's okay with you, 
I'm going to speak to my problem. I do not know about you, but the situation you're going through, you've been speaking, you've been speaking to the wrong person about the problem. Now I want you to speak to that problem in the name of Jesus. Some of you, is there a medical condition here? The doctor says, no way. Probably the doctor said, you can't have a child. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody, probably it may be here, that God says, you are, something is wrong with you. You are not able to have a child. But I want you to open your mouth and begin to decree and declare in the name of the name of Jesus, the name above every name. You tell that uterus, you begin to be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. You begin to talk to your body, whatever the problem is right now, you tell the body of yours align yourself to the will and the purposes of God go back to functioning the proper way you were designed to function I'm not taking malfunction as a part of my life I decree I declare to my body in the name of Jesus from the top of my head to the soles of my feet the power of the Holy Ghost flows and I decree healing into my body in the awesome name of Jesus from the top oh praise god somebody oh the, i want to let you know this you can be healed right now you can be healed right now. You can be healed right now. You can be healed right now. Right now. Right now. You can be healed. If you're sick in your body, just place your hand on the area of affliction. If it's a back problem, place your hands on the back. If it's your neck problem, please your, place your hands on the neck. Whatever the portion of that body which is giving you trouble and pain, tonight will be your deliverance. Somebody need to open your mouth and declare Jesus Christ, the name above every name. That name is bigger than the pain you're carrying that name is bigger than cancer that name is bigger than age that name is bigger than any other name every disease has a name but the name of Jesus has a bigger name I want to declare that name among the congregation of the brethren and if you have pain of whatever sort tonight I want you to speak that name Please place your hands on the area of affliction even right now in the awesome name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to decree and declare. And after I speak forth, I want to let you know something. You do something you could not do before. If it was a leg problem, jump. Tell your neighbor, excuse me, neighbor. I'm going to jump a little bit. If it's going to be a problem with your elbow, tell your neighbor, if I just touch you, please don't mind. I'm just checking. Are you ready? Oh, hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Just begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Open your mouth. When I say pray, I want you to decree. 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 Come on, open your mouth. Every person. Oh, every person. Every, I said every person. I said every person. I said every person. If you have a mouth, the Bible says the dead cannot praise the Lord. The Bible says the dead. I'm sure you are not dead. You are alive. You are breathing. The Bible tells me if you have breath, you must praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Open up that mouth of yours and begin to decree mysteries. Shandabaya. Speak mysteries in the Holy Ghost. Tell God, I've got, I've come to your presence to receive that which belongs from me. No devil can snatch it from me because I've come. I'm a Talmud. I am planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in a season. Oh, I draw from the water of life. I draw from the living water. I draw from you. Are you ready? Just open up your mouth and speak for them. Begin to give praise. Father, in the name of Jesus. Shandaboro ko shandabaraya. Me soto bi handele bi. Roma kashanda. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We come against every sickness in the authority given to your child, given the authority given to the man of God, given the authority as I stand in this office of a preacher, as I stand in this office, the authority bestowed upon me. I take authority over every sickness in the name of Jesus. Every pain leave now in the name of Jesus. Every pain goes, headache leave, body pain go eyes be healed 
backs be healed back pain go organs set yourself right every muscles begin to start working properly somebody say praise the lord oh receive that healing say that's me i receive my healing i receive my healing i receive my deliverance i receive my deliverance in the name of jesus Every pain must go in the name of Jesus. I command it to happen now. As we are just thanking God, I want the rest of you, whoever has been in pain, to just, to just check. The rest of you, open your mouth and praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Say, God, I praise you. Check. Check. Somebody keep praising the Lord. 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 Somebody ought to praise. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the evening. Praise Him when the sun goes down. Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of adoration. There's none like Him. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and He's the last. He's the fairest of 10,000. Nobody like Jesus. Check your body right now before I pray and I close. Check your body right now. Check your body right now. Check your body right now. Check, check, check. You must do. You must move, move, move. Move. Whatever the pain is. If your hand, move. Move that place. Move that area. Move that area. Hallelujah. Move that area. Right now. If you got something, if the Lord has done something, just wave. The Lord has done something, just wave. The Lord has done things, just wave. Wave. Come quickly. Can you give a one minute testimony? Come please. Please come. Just one minute. Nothing more. Can you come up in front? Just tell us what happened. Yeah, please come. Yeah, tell us. Uh, this is like yesterday night. I have spondylitis, so it's like the whole hand, it was numb till here. In the morning, doc came. He gave me some ointments. He told me how to massage everything. And it was like the whole day, I couldn't move my head like anywhere. And now when we prayed, it's like God healed. I can move my head like... Somebody say praise the Lord. Come, brother, come. Next, next. Very quickly. Please come very quickly. Just a minute like this. Very quickly. The rest of you, if you want to come, just be ready. Uh, since we had a tough games, I was having pains on the legs and the shoulders. And the entire body was paining. Uh, last night when we had the uh, Pebble Mount, uh, I couldn't enjoy uh, as I was willing to do. Uh, I want to enjoy and dance and praise God, but I couldn't do that even uh, today evening. I couldn't do that. Uh, but now as I was praying, God touched me and I am all right. <laughs> Thank God. Praise the Lord. Another testimony. Quickly. Somebody else was there. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Come. Was there somebody there? Please come. Very quickly. If you want to give testimony, come very quickly. Otherwise, I'm going to close with this.